Hi, I'm Jason West. I'm Steve Fakuda. I'm Vince Zampella. I'm Mackie McCandlish. I'm Ziad Riki. What you're looking at here is Tank Hunt, one of our Russian levels. In the game, it's called Repairing the Wire, but we used to call it Tank Hunt because you were originally just going to hunt down the tanks in the streets of Stalingrad. Then after some testing, we realized, hey, this isn't entirely everything it should be, so we need a story for this level. So we came up with this idea that you would be repairing a field phone wire that connected a couple of outposts, and that's the story. <laughs> and then later, you do destroy tanks. Right. Well, we just saw some friendlies do some cool corner behavior where they uh, step out from the corner, which they didn't do in Call of Duty 1. And uh, I mean, we just saw an enemy do it, in fact. So our AI do all sorts of more interesting stuff now like that. That uh, not only looks good, but it helps with the gameplay quite a bit because uh, it was really hard to see and hit the enemies in Call of Duty 1 sometimes. Yeah, you're often shooting at their elbows that were like poking out behind cover. So now they make a more distinct effort to either be in cover or be exposed and trying to attack you. We did a lot of testing with focus testers on this level. We watched how they played it. Initially, the level was a lot more open-ended, and we noticed that players would often get confused as to where to go. They would get misled by certain cues in the level. So the wire also helped to guide their path. Originally, we were playing somewhat more realistically, where we had the wire being buried under rubble and snow, and they could never see it, so over time, over several tests, it migrated more and more towards the center of the path. Yeah, hopefully people uh, have an easy time getting through this level at this point. All of our tests have been uh, much, much better. <laughs> yeah, we thought it was a cool idea to just have you sort of follow the wire through the level. The main designer on this level is a uh, Swedish guy who became very distraught when Players would get lost trying to follow the wire, so after a, a little bit of coaxing, we finally we got it uh, a little bit easier. And... <laughs> Wait, avoid the grenade. That was uh, one of our female soldiers that you'll see in the Russian levels. They're, uh, they're not all through the game, but I think they add a little bit of extra spice and realism. You can see the, uh, the weather system kicking up here. It's starting to get a little, uh, little more dense. It changes as you go through the level. So you're seeing the PPSH-41 firing, which we test fired, and uh, it actually has very little recoil in real life. The rifles, by comparison, are extremely powerful in terms of recoil, but we toned that down for gameplay. And uh, we got to uh, use the sounds from the weapon shoot to uh, create the sounds in the game, so we keep them very authentic, as well as getting the you know authentic recoils and animations and textures for the weapons. It's a bit of a funny story about the firing range. Uh, myself and a few other members of the team, we placed a bet on who could hit targets with the, uh, the one of the rifles, the SVT-40. Shooting at a target about 70 yards away, I think. And uh, I won that bet. As I understand it, it wasn't... <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was really funny. It wasn't until... The funny part, no, the funny part... <laughs> The funny part is that it wasn't until money was on the line that, that Steve assumes this sort of ninja sharpshooter professional pose and, and wins the tournament. And I'd, I'd like to point out that I came in second. He was sandbagging. Yeah, was Bit of a ringer. Two shots. That's all it took to win out of the ten allotted. Uh, the PPSH is also a favorite weapon with the players just because it has a 70, 70 round clip. People. People love that about that gun. Yeah, it's really not hard to understand why the Soviet army outfitted huge squads, huge numbers of troops with this weapon exclusively. Yeah, we can hear the AI talking excessively about the situation that's going on here, talking about the fascists to the south. They really go on and on about the fascists. Yeah, that's uh, what you're hearing is the new battle chatter system, which uh, we recorded 25,000 lines of dialogue for the game to be used throughout the level to uh, provide clues as to what's going on around you. Only a couple thousand are fascist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's more uh, more storage allocated to sound on this game than the entire Call of Duty 1. It really... Uh, brings the uh, the squad to life and makes them more useful, more believable. 
you'll see the player in this demo he throws grenades a lot and what might not be obvious to players is that the uh, Germans will frequently drop grenades when you kill them so after you really want to try to use your grenades as much as possible and then as you run past their bodies you'll pick up more grenades and then you can continue to use them and uh, throw the AI for a loop and really get them to move around a bit and then shoot them when they come running out. If you watch for the piano on the third level above there, you may see it fall down in a minute. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> There's the uh, grenade icon on the screen right now. That's uh, an indicator we added to let the player know when there's a grenade in uh, proximity to him that could uh, injure him. As you can see, the AI don't have those. <laughs> When we were testing the game, uh, we found that players were uh, so involved in the combat that they wouldn't have the opportunity to notice nearby grenades, so we really needed to add that. I think it adds a lot to the gameplay. And on the AI avoiding grenades, it was, uh, it's more fun when your grenades can actually kill AI. Right. <laughs> than with Sometimes so. I think testers look at the grenade icon as an indicator that they're supposed to throw a grenade over there, which leads to calamity. <laughs> well, I don't think you can overdo the uh, information you give to the player as far as what's going on when you uh, start making games with this much action. And see, uh, autosave just happened right there. We had to add a lot of autosaves to this level. It's, it's a pretty difficult level. The autosave system is smart enough to not uh, auto save if somebody's aiming directly at you or shooting at you or there's a grenade about to blow up next to you. Yeah, we really uh, push the auto save system. It's very important. Right, especially Although, considering that we took out the player's ability to save and load freely at any time. <laughs> it was important to have a really good auto save system. Yeah, hopefully the player never notices it, but uh, I think it would make the game unplayable if we didn't have it. Well, it's worth pointing out that you also don't pick up health packs in Call of Duty 2. You Way to focus on the toilet, whoever was <laughs> playing this level. Good job. Yeah. Hey, we got nice toilet art in this game. There's normal maps in the toilet, so... Just appreciate that's the specular. That's not all that's in the toilet. <laughs> that's not all that's in the toilet. <laughs> hey, I made that joke. <laughs> that was just a green. Is there a sniper rifle around here? Um, Steve didn't pick it up. Yeah, there's a sniper rifle back there that you want to get and then keep for every following level. Right, it's by, if, the, machi by the machine gun. Yeah, if you're a, a sniper rifle fan, which I am. It's oh a, yeah, it's we a know G43 that. It's G43 sniper. So you can really see uh, the level of detail that we were able to uh, achieve in this game. It's, you know, tenfold over where we were in the last game, and it uh, really adds to the, uh, the level of immersion. We had dedicated environmental artists on Call of Duty 2 that so just went through here and detailed stuff like an interior decorator, live in these rooms for a while. On that wire you just passed by, this uh, this level led to a lot of iterations on our objective glow, because people used to miss sections of wire and then play through the level and then have to go back. So we really cranked up that glow until the player can't possibly miss it. Yeah, in a normal playthrough, this is one of the first levels you encounter where you really have to use your objectives. and. Um, find a lot of objects placed in the in the level. We seal the player into this area so you can't, after you do the objective, you can't screw up and backtrack and get lost going back through the first part of the level. Yeah, we had some people do that. I did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are sticky bombs. Little uh, Saving Private Ryan reference there. See, he just dropped a grenade bag. You gotta pick that up. Oh, he's already got full grenades. For a long time, the AI used to drop like four distinct grenades like a pinata. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it took us a while until we finally got that replaced with a, a satchel of grenades. Yeah. Well, players wouldn't know that it was a live grenade or a grenade ammo on the ground. So it's an important distinction. <laughs> see our friendlies are moving up with us throughout the level. They scale back the number of friendlies when you're in these tight interior spaces. See, that guy just fell down and grabbed his neck, and now if you could sort of see the German on the right, he was crawling away, and now he's out of sight. Our Germans will try to crawl away to die in a cold corner. <laughs> Oh, 
There's a taunt. Use some grenades. I like the taunts. That was something that we added pretty late in the game. Really adds a little bit of extra oh, there's variation. <laughs> oh, he couldn't make it. He was reaching for his rifle. Another neat thing to watch out for is uh, if there's a guy hiding at a corner, you can just watch for the breath puff. Ooh, shell shock. Yeah, the sound went down. You can't hear the guns anymore. <laughs> oh, friendlies are eating it. Now the tank hunt begins. And this, uh, rushing the tanks is a little bit uh, of a suicide mission, but it's a lot of fun. But it gives the players the opportunity to be inventive and like flank around right here and not have to go straight at the uh, objective. That that handprint that was in the center of the screen was added after watching testers fire at the tank for hours. <laughs> Until they expended <laughs> entire clips and... You can see our tank is moving around, avoiding the player. Nice little gameplay addition. You're actually going to get a mobility kill on the tank? I don't know about this playthrough. <laughs> I think it'll be on the second tank that you'll see it. There are a number of different ways that your friendlies will clear out the interior of the tank. They put up a lot of uh, level-specific dirt, in this case, snow, when a tank moves, which is cool. Oh, are we going to see the tank? Kill no, him? that was the uh, blow-up. If you put it on the engine or whatever, oh, yeah, it right. blows it up. Yeah, two different ways to destroy a tank in the snow. Places like this are good places to throw smoke grenades, which a lot of new players, since that's a new addition to Call of Duty 2, it takes them a while to get in the habit of using smoke grenades. Yeah, you start each level with four, so it's usually a good idea to try to think about the different places in the level that you might want to throw in. Some levels let you find more, but you always know you have four, so you can... Look, this little area we've added as an alternate route, because that used to be uh, just one alley, and then players would constantly get mowed down there and not use their smoke grenades. So we added this little detour route so that you can play it without having to use a smoke grenade. And you might notice from time to time in the game that there's a uh, there's bicycles placed, and uh, sometimes in you know perhaps not the most appropriate places, but he lives there and past that door. I know he, he rides to work from there, and uh, <laughs> that's because one of our uh, artists is really into bicycles and placing them. And the same guy, he was a little upset when we cut the uh, Russian tank, which you know makes some of these levels a little harder. I guess you never have any Russian tanks helping you, and. I think we learned something from that for future games to always outfit both sides with at least one heavy mechanized weapon. And bicycles. And bicycles. And bicycles. While we're on topic of these random objects, if you uh, notice there's sometimes pianos on various interiors throughout the game, you can actually try playing them. That was a Swifty. Just yeah. uh, hit the use yeah, key. Semi -swift Swifty. In fact, it's even mapped out a little bit up and down. Yeah, you can actually play it too. Play the high notes, play the low notes. So this is actually getting to the section where the uh, original gameplay comes in. Yeah, this is cool because we reuse the original area and let you uh, use what you've learned from the original section. Right, if you plant the explosive on the top, the rear of the tank, that will destroy the tank outright. If you plant it on the wheels at the back, it'll actually create a mobility kill. You'll see the tread actually get popped. Wow, I just learned that. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and the friendlies come over and right. do the stuff. If the tank stops, ends up stopping a place where your friendlies can't really get to it, then after a certain amount of time, it'll just time out and explode on its own. We Sanitage. actually made a model of the tank with the tread destroyed as right. well. Just for that. We personally. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you, Mackie. <laughs> so there's the uh, friendlies going up to take out the rest of the tank. Extreme modeling. Yeah. Get away, friendly. It's gonna. Oh. Yay. Oh, no, he probably ate it. Yeah. <laughs> it's dangerous work. So here is the smoke grenades moment. I'm gonna throw all my smoke grenades and cloud up the entire street. There's a smoke grenade behind that barrel. 
Yeah, this is a pretty intense moment. You gotta be careful when you're running into these huge smoke clouds because the AI will melee you. They'll come out and just bash you to death. Especially for the higher difficulty levels, it's just one hit and you're gone. So you gotta be very careful. It can work against you. You can see their silhouettes, though, in the smoke. Right. And they can see yours yep. if you get really close. If you get close enough to see their silhouettes, then... You should shoot them. Yeah, then you're in melee range. <laughs> yeah, I've been uh, beaten down a few times with someone coming out of the smoke. It's a really scary moment. I enjoy it. Also in the smoke, the uh, the friendly uh, name pop-up doesn't work, so you can't use that to tell whether or not it's friend or foe. In case it's not entirely obvious, you should use uh, ADS a lot in this game and aim at the enemies. ADS is aiming down the sight for the uninitiated. And iron sights for people to play other games. <laughs> Actually, I heard uh, that's the term they use in the Marines. Oh, that's where it comes from. Yep. I wasn't in the Marines myself. So what do they call shooting from the hip? Does anybody shoot that way? Video game characters. Here's the music cue that's playing, composed by Graham Ravel, and recorded in Bratislava. When the Germans tried to use that tank against the Russians, they actually had a really hard time. The T-34 uh, would take it down easily, so they had to build the Tigers and things specifically for the Eastern Front. See there, there's a PPS-42 under the use icon. It's another one the submachine guns we introduced for COD 2. Let's go. Nice little banana clip on that gun. Yeah. Train yard. <laughs> 